In this video you'll learn how to make an easy and simple terrarium that will last for years to come. I've done my best to link most of the materials I've used down below. Often overlooked in most terrarium tutorials is picking a suitable glass to build your terrarium in. Both of these examples here would make great terrariums, but if you're just starting out it would be a wise idea to use the one on the left as it has a much larger opening. Now we've selected the glassware, let's get into the build. I start by adding a drainage layer to the bottom of the jar. The purpose of this layer is to provide a place for excess water to sit, instead of sitting in the substrate. I use this terrarium tool to make sure the layer is flat with no high or low points. It's simply just a stick with a cork on the end. For this terrarium I use some cheap pea gravel, but you can use what you have available. Any small rocks or pebbles will work. For a terrarium this size, the drainage layer only needs to be about half an inch thick, and obviously the bigger the terrarium, the bigger the drainage layer. Now depending on the size drainage gravel you use, you may need to add a mesh separator. This will help keep the substrate out of the drainage layer. If you've used pea gravel like I have here, which is relatively small in size, it's not 100% necessary, as the substrate will have a hard time finding its way through. If you're using something like leaker, which is a lot larger in size, it's definitely worth using. I like to use window screen mesh as it's easy to cut, the water can get through easily and it comes in a big sheet like this which lasts for a while. Usually the next step would be to add a charcoal layer. This will help remove any impurities inside the terrarium. But as I use it in my substrate mix, a dedicated layer is not necessary. Talking about the substrate, it is a staple of your terrarium's health so it's important that you get it right. The ideal terrarium substrate should provide nutrients, hold humidity and be resistant to compression. Quick tip before putting it in the terrarium, it's a good idea to decide which face you want to be the front and back. Most glass jars have these seams going down the side, which ideally you don't want to be visible, so it's a good idea to make sure they are on the sides of the terrarium. Back to the substrate, I'll put the mix I use up on screen now, so you can have a go at making it yourself. But if you can't make it, like I said at the start, I'll have all the links below. Once a generous amount of substrate is in, I use the terrarium tool to slope it towards the back and gently pat it down. By creating a slope towards the back, this will help improve the depth inside the terrarium and make it look deeper than it actually is. Time for the fun part, the hardscape. When it comes to this part of making a terrarium, you can make it as elaborate or as simple as you want. These are an example of some of the different rocks and sticks you can use inside your terrarium. But if you don't fancy buying them, you can always have a look outside and see what you can find. For this terrarium, I want to keep the hardscape really simple to put more focus on the plant I'm going to be using. This is black lava rock, and I'm just going to place a few pieces around the base of the terrarium. To keep them in place, I simply use some tweezers or my hands to gently push them into the substrate. It's important to take your time and come up with a layout you are happy with. Time for the moss. I'm using fern moss for this terrarium, but you can use what moss you have available to you. I simply just tear it into chunks and gently place it around the terrarium. Most species of moss grow great inside a terrarium, but on the other hand, some don't. It's all about trial and error and finding the ones that work for you. If you're finding this video useful, be sure to give it a like. Using some smaller pieces, I fill in any gaps and cracks around the terrarium and gently pat it all down onto the substrate. As the moss was relatively dry, I gave it a light spray down before continuing. Time for the plants, or plant I should say, as I'm just using this one for this terrarium. But if you wanted to use more, here's a few options that grow great in terrariums. I propagated this peperomia from just a leaf cutting. Let me know if you would like to see a separate video on how to propagate your terrarium plants. I'm using a wooden stick to create a small hole in the substrate for the stem of the plant to go into. Although this cutting has little to no roots at the moment, the humidity of the terrarium will actually provide perfect conditions for it to root and grow. Time for a light spray down. When it comes to watering, it's very important that you don't oversaturate the terrarium. The substrate should be damp, but not wet or soggy. If you're ever unsure, just remember less is more. I then use a microfiber cloth to clean the glass of the terrarium. Not finished yet, we first need to add the springtails. 
These are tiny little helpers that will help keep the terrarium clean by eating any mould or decaying matter. Their poop will then fertilise the plants and in turn the plants provide sufficient oxygen for them to survive. Now place your terrarium under an LED light or in a bright spot in indirect sunlight and watch it grow for years to come. If you found this video useful and plan to make a terrarium yourself, watch this video for 5 of the best tips to make a healthy terrarium.